Welcome to our lecture series about engineering mechanics statics. For our second lecture, we will focus our discussion on scalars and vectors. We will also discuss an important topic that involves the operation of vectors such as the triangle law and the parallelogram law of addition. Let us start first with scalars and vectors. By definition, a scalar is defined as a quantity that possesses magnitude only. Examples of a scalar quantity are the following. Mass. Time. Temperature. Speed. Density. Energy. For the entire lecture series, we will write scalar quantities as italicized English or Greek letters to have a distinction towards vectors. Examples of this are as shown. Vectors, on the other hand, is defined as a quantity that possesses both magnitude and direction. Examples of vectors are force, displacement, acceleration, momentum, velocity, weight. For the entire lecture series, vectors will be expressed as bold letters, indicated in the following examples shown. We will also use a line segment to represent vectors geometrically, with its sense and direction is specified with an arrow or head. Example shows vector A. With a magnitude of 4 units directed from point O to point P. Measured 20 degrees counterclockwise from the horizontal axis. Take note that the length of the line segment also represents the magnitude of the vector. For the next topic, we will discuss about vector addition, which is a fundamental operation on vectors. The addition of two vectors using a geometric approach can be performed using two methods, triangle law, and parallelogram law of addition. Since the geometric configuration of vector addition is composed of triangles, the calculation of the magnitude of the vectors, which is also equal to the length of the side of a triangle, can be obtained using some important laws in trigonometry. The most common ones are the laws of sines and cosines. These methods is very useful in solving for the unknown sides and interior angles of any triangle. The law of sine states that the ratio of the length of a side of a triangle, to the sine of the angle opposite that side, is the same for all sides and angles in a given triangle. The law of cosines on the other hand, states that the square of one side of the triangle, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, minus twice the product of the other two sides and the cosine of the angle between them. In problems involving right triangles, we can use these common trigonometric functions in solving for the missing sides and angles. In vector addition, let's show first how to perform the parallelogram law of addition. Say we have two vectors. Vector A and vector B. The sum of the two vectors which is the resultant vector, to be denoted as R, can be obtained with parallelogram law of addition using the following procedure. For the first step, join the tails of the two vectors. The tail of vector A and the tail of vector B must meet at a single point to make it concurrent, or intersect at a common point. Step 2. From the head of vector B, Draw a line parallel to vector A. Draw a second line from the head of vector A that is parallel to vector B. The two lines will intersect at point P. Forming a parallelogram shape as shown. Step 3, the diagonal formed from the tail of vectors A and B, to point P, represents the resultant vector, or the vector sum, denoted as vector R, such that vector R, is equal to vector A, plus vector B. For our example problem, using parallelogram law of addition, determine the magnitude of vector f, and the magnitude of the resultant force, denoted as vector f sub r, which is the resultant of f and the 200 pound force, if vector f sub r is directed along the positive y axis. Take note that the resultant force vector f sub r, of vector f and the 200 pound force, is directed along the y axis. Therefore, the parallel lines drawn from the heads of F and the 200 pound force must intersect in the Y axis as shown. This way, we can achieve the desired direction of the resultant force, which is along the positive Y axis. 
The parallelogram formed for the given problem is presented as shown, with all the internal angles, which is given from vector f and the 200 pound force. We can now solve the problem by calculating the magnitude of both vector f, and vector f sub r. We can use the law of sines from the triangle in the side of the parallelogram. Using sine law, the magnitude of vector f, is divided by the sine of the opposite angle of 60 degrees. This is equal to the magnitude of f sub r divided by the sine of the sum of angles 45 and 30 degrees. As well as the 200 pound force divided by the sine of opposite angle 45 degrees. Calculating the equation, we get, 244.95 pounds for the magnitude of f, and 273.2 pounds for the magnitude of f sub r. Let us now discuss another method of vector addition, which is the triangle law. If triangle law is applied, the two vectors must be connected, in a head-to-tail manner. Using same vectors, vector A, and vector B. Connect the head of vector A, to the tail of vector B. The resultant R is obtained which is measured, from the tail of vector A, to the head of vector B. The resultant, R, is equal to, A plus B. In a similar approach, the resultant can also be obtained, by connecting the head of vector B, to the tail of vector A. The the resultant is measured from the tail of vector B, to the head of vector A. The resultant, R, equals to, B plus A, making vector addition a commutative property. Let us have an example using the triangle law. In the given figure, two position vectors of magnitudes 60 feet and 100 feet are shown. Take note that, a position vector is a vector drawn, between two points in space. Determine the resultant vector R, which is equal to vector A plus vector B analytically, using the triangle law. First, let us connect vector A, and vector B in a head-to-tail manner. For this problem, I will connect the head of vector A, to the tail of vector B, as shown in the figure. The resultant is directed from the tail of vector A, to the head of vector B, forming a triangle as shown. The internal angle between vector A and vector B can be calculated as shown. We can determine the magnitude of the resultant, r, by using the law of cosines. The square of r, is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides, 60 feet and 100 feet, minus twice the product of the other two sides, and cosine the angle between them. The magnitude of the resultant r, is 151 feet. The magnitude of r, is directed along an angle measured from the horizontal. In this case, the angle is 30 degrees plus alpha. To calculate alpha, we can use the law of sines as shown. Calculating alpha, we get 25.2 degrees. The direction of R then is, 55.2 degrees. An illustration is shown in this figure, showing the magnitude and direction of R. See if you can perform vector addition using parallelogram law, by solving this problem. Take a pause in this video first before answering. You can see the answers later after you continue the video. Let's try solving another problem, in this case, we will use the triangle law. Take a pause before you start solving. Just continue after you finish to see the answers. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from this lecture video. Don't forget to answer other problems for practice, to improve your analytical skills and critical thinking. Remember that this video is only for guidance in your studies, your effort is what will help you learn more. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel.
See you on our next lecture video.